basketballs are not enough to call this scene out for over-basketballing, but it is too, too many basketballs for a high school hallway without the accompanying teacher yelling for them to put those in a locker. I wonder if, now that Kamala's all confident and stuff, she'll realize that she can break this pattern of perfectly timed high school hallway bullshit by simply arriving a minute earlier or two minutes later. What makes you think you have admin powers? Because we're both charming and we look a lot younger than we are. Marvel thinks that its introduction of the multiverse makes it okay to steal jokes from our universe about Paul Rudd's abnormal and completely unfair genetics. I heard Zoe's follower count like quadrupled this weekend. And now we enter the opposite side of the hallway where the tunnel of exposition is already in progress. This QR code works? Yes, I'm giving that a sin because it leads us to a site where Marvel teases free content while also dangling in front of us another paid subscription service, which I'm probably signing up for because I'm absolutely loving the show. So the sin is me being incapable of not giving my money to Marvel and Disney being incapable of not taking it. And then all of a sudden there was all this screaming and I was thrown to the ground. How, how do you forget that you were slammed by Thor's hammer? How do you forget that? Also, you know all those times in life where you stand shoulder to shoulder with your friends for a protracted period of time so everyone has to turn their necks 90 degrees to engage in the conversation and the camera can film everyone from the same angle? Yeah, neither do I. So, who was it? Uh... Nightlight. Show is leaning hard into its portrayal of superheroes as celebrities in this reality, so it stands to reason that Kamala's an up-and-coming star. What doesn't make sense is that Zoe would feel the need to make up this name on the spot. That would be like us naming Courtney Cox Nightlight when we saw her for the first time in Cocoon The Return. I don't know, guys. It's hard for me to take scenes like this seriously when there are people positioned behind Zoe who are only able to stare directly at the back of her head, as if that is somehow normal. I see we're sticking with the 17 Logos theme in episode 2, which means I suddenly feel obligated to sin this again. But I don't like being obligated to sin, so this sin is for the pressure to sin and my determination to break free by sinning it anyway, which somehow brings me a sense of control. Therapy for the win. Now I'm going to point out that if the school has any budget issues, they might want to consider turning unneeded lights off in unused parts of the building like this one. I guess we wouldn't truly be backstage in a high school theater if this random assortment of easily toppled items wasn't set up and ready to fall at the slightest nudge. Featuring this beautiful mural by B. Mike would have earned this show a sin off, or not for the fact that it's in Atlanta and not Jersey City. Okay, no super strength. All I got is this. Being mildly dissatisfied with just one superpower. So it looks like your power isn't coming from the bank. Show wants you to know that you'll do none of this and more on your Microsoft Surface. Does this look like some kind of writing view? Looks like Arabic or Urdu. I don't know. If only the teenage smart guy who somehow managed to scan your body and interpret all sorts of graphs and shit on a tablet could also take a photo of this writing and feed it into a piece of technology that would immediately Google Translate it. Again, the show says New Jersey when the skyline says Georgia. You have to let me go. <laughs> As the saying goes, pride comes before the fall from an inconsequential height that you concealed with a deceiving camera angle to artificially create tension, despite the fact that we all know you're not going to harm the main character in any meaningful way in the second episode of the series. Also, super good thing that not one person is looking through all these windows at the highly suspect shenanigans happening in broad daylight. Beating pipes does not make water come out faster. Beating pipes makes it worse. No Snapchatting in the masjid. It's Insta. When you're so brand loyal that you feel the need to correct your elders in the masjid, but still can't be bothered to use the entire name of said brand. Oh, they really gotta fix this place? Uh, no, you mean they gotta fix our section of this place. It's clear this scene is trying to make a point about unequal distribution of resources, but audio feedback is loud, terrible, and should be heard all throughout this room, not just in one section. Sisters, no talking during the lecture, please. Because of course our favorites get in trouble for whispering, even though the selfie sisters were so loud just a moment ago. Selective hearing that drives the plot is selective. And the mosque shoe thief has struck again. Writers think I won't immediately become more interested in the case of the shoe thief than I am in the main plot. That is the 22nd pair of shoes that have been stolen. So go with me here. Maybe stop wearing expensive, desirable shoes to a place where people keep stealing them. Thanks for coming. Miguel's hovering. Who the f is Miguel? What's up? You want some? Is there alcohol on that? Nah, it's just orange juice. Who the f is this kid? And why is he offering random people his orange juice? And why is Kamala accepting his orange juice? And why does the scene feel like a meaningful lesson about not trusting drinks from strangers wrapped in a contrived coming of age trope? And why do I feel like adding a sin even though I agree with the message? Throw my shirt. I was going to send the attractive character sexually emerges from water cliche, but I'm going to pivot to the starstruck character standing on clothing that is needed by waterlogged hottie cliche because it's just so annoying when it happens. Did, did she just pull a drink out of the freezer? I think she just pulled a drink out of a freezer. 
This is one of the most clever ways I've seen texting visualized on screen. It reminds me of just how well this show makes use of effects like this to tell Kamala's story and give her world a fun and youthful aesthetic. Kamala agrees to driving lessons without checking with her parents first. Is that allowed? Kids are terrifying. Spent six weeks on ancient Rome and ancient Greece, but six minutes on ancient Persia and Byzantium. Nakia would be the marvelous Miss Marvel at World History Sins. Hey. Kick, are you feeling all right? Kamala can't stop glowing, which I fail to see the issue with, but the show presents it as a problem that can't be solved without first confirming that she's tried to take the bangle off or that she even still has it on for that matter. I know how weird your mom can get about tampons. Tampons? Oh, come on. It's not like people believe they get lost in your bloodstream or something. Wait, they did? Okay, well, it's not like some people believe you lose your virginity to them or something. Oh, they do. Fine, at least we all know they're made from cotton candy. Wait. What? Okay, well then this sin is for ridiculous misunderstandings about tampons. I mean, she does have another hand if she wanted to carry on the cycle ruse and reach for it. De-stress after school. Yeah. Best thing you can do. Drive. In Jersey City? Show wants me to believe that it believes there are roads in the tri-state area designed in any way to help someone de-stress without having a full-on panic attack. Maybe someday you'll feel like Jersey's your home. Jersey? <laughs> This is Kamran. He's our cousin. This works. The British left us with a mess. My exact statement after eating lunch with Ian somehow makes it into the script. Hey, there's a story about Muniba's family. That I quickly need to talk about because it's important to the plot, so stand by while I exposit a little for the audience. I wait for the post every day. Yeah, I'll get on that. Boldface lying to your elders. But no, I've spoken too much already. No, 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 I'm not going to talk about this at all, Beta. As someone who once received an electric massager from their grandparents, I'm aware that certain presents should never be acknowledged or discussed. But Nani refusing to talk about the family heirloom she just gifted Kamala seems more about drawing out the story and less about things people actually do. I don't have a mango man in this scene. Oh, something wrong? The voices on the phone could be heard in the hallway away from the door. Mr. Khan bangs on the door, and when he opens it, he believes that Kamala's just asleep? Are the men in this show just dumb? After that, we will mobilize the Sunday school teachers to help infiltrate the InstaClick. Fine, don't explain what incriminating evidence has given the teachers leverage over the InstaClick, but at least tell me why are these teens always ordering groceries? Technically the reverts. But to do that, you have to make it past the mini Harami girls. What? Have they been sworn to protect the reverts for some reason? Even then, it looks like they're really into running around a bunch, so getting past them is probably just a matter of waiting till they're out of your way. The Illuminantes. Dips. I'll talk to them. I mean, sure, go directly to the aunties, but wasn't the whole point of the last scene to go to specific groups first to get a greater chance at the aunties? And if not, then why show us the previous progression of the political plan at all? I have to go after my white whale. Character uses everyone's favorite literary reference for something difficult, cliche. As Nakia presses for a vote, I'm reminded that too many people use the political knuckle-pointing gesture thing. It's distracting, and I'm so focused on it that I can't even hear anything important being said. Oh, she's talking about women's rights? Oh, no worries. We don't have to worry about anything changing there, right? Right? I'm not sure where to get anything on this plate, and that is a f***ing sin because it looks delicious. Is this about the party? Eh, it's a strange question to ask when the first question should be, where are my parents? I heard she killed a man. <gasps> Dead. Uh, yes. Killing one does mean they are dead. I never understand why anyone says kill the man dead, as if there are other options. Not figuring out what filter setting to use prior to selfieing yourself out a window so that the writers could cook up a scenario requiring our resident hero to intervene. In summation, even as a narrative device, the sin here is still kids. How did anyone get this shot at eye level as Kamala did a ridiculous three-point superhero landing? Given the way he lands on each of these things as he blinkos his way to the ground, it makes sense if he said, my face, my back, my ribs, or even my ass, but my ankle? How the f*** did that happen? Show wants us to believe that no one here, not even Scowls McGee, saw Kamran zoom in with his uncle's whip, pick up Kamala, and speed away. It's like you to be my mom. Damn, Kamran. You've only been on one date. And the next thing I know, I am barefoot on a New York City sidewalk in the middle of summer. Wait, what makes you think you have ambient powers? I ate six muffins downstairs a while ago and my cholesterol level is 305. This girl shows up, breaks into my house, takes the lantern, blasts me, and suddenly she's best friends with Pat, saying she's a superhero's daughter and, and we're just supposed to believe it all without question. Now it comes to it. 
I don't feel like parting with it. It's mine. I found it. It came to me. Rudolph, please, could you tone it down a bit? That nose. That beautiful, wonderful nose. One. Very cute. <laughs> and... Chanel, you're in desperate need of Chanel. Hello. Hey. What'd you do, jump ship? What? Well, what's with the life preserver? Remember the time you were working with, um, what was the name? Hot... Hot Topic? Of course. Freaking Hot Topic. That explains everything. How do you feel about our first dance as husband and wife uh -huh. being to living on a prayer? Patrick, that's a terrible idea.